Hello everyone, my name is Miranda, um, and it's been a while. Hi, again, it's been a while again. Um, yeah, I've been away for a bit because I was doing third year of university, so, you know, that was a lot. However, I am now finished. Um, I have submitted all of my essays, all of my everything, exams, dissertation, assignments all done so I'm I'm back um, because you know now I just have a job to worry about <laughs> and you know adult things like finding a place to live um, it's, it's great it's going great but anyway for you know this I feel like this is every video I've made recently has been a comeback but um, for this another comeback um i'm just gonna be um yeah kind of doing a little life update explaining where i am and then going through all of the books i've read um since i last updated you um which is actually quite a few um i didn't think it would be as this many but i guess it has been you know half a year so if you've watched my video called reading and depression um you will know that i am mentally ill and um I've had a bit of a rough time honestly in the last I mean it's been a while but you know the, the last kind of section of university really finished me off um and I thought I wasn't going to be able to graduate um this summer I thought I was going to have to like submit all my assignments for summer deadlines and graduate in the autumn um and yeah i really i really got to the lowest place that i've been for a long time um and even before that um i was just too busy to make youtube videos and honestly i kind of i kind of developed a sort of tunnel vision um where anything that i enjoyed um, any of my hobbies that weren't university work kind of I, I wasn't put, allowing myself to get into them um, and enjoy them and part of that was because my brain was just so tired um, so I did a lot of listening to podcasts and playing Tetris again I'm pretty sure I mentioned that in my <laughs> um, in my previous video but yeah lots of podcasts lots of Tetris and lots of Candy Crush it's been an interesting <laughs> six months since the beginning of the year um and especially an interesting you know two months um since kind of you know or well, three i guess march april and may were interesting <laughs> however i like i said i did manage to submit all of my assignments on time um an absolute miracle i have to say um and yeah i'm very proud of myself for getting everything done because i genuinely there was a long time where i thought it just wasn't gonna happen um but i did it i did it and now i feel like i can enjoy my life again <laughs> that sounds really bad but i mean i did enjoy life before you know when i was at uni for, for some some of it but I can now go back to all of my hobbies um, and things that I enjoyed like this. So hopefully you will be seeing me a bit more often. I really hope so because um, I have really missed doing this um, and yeah it's it's I love doing it. But all that being said let's talk about some books that I've read recently or not not even that recently anymore. <laughs> some books I've read quite a long time ago. We're gonna start with all the books that I read for uni, um, which is quite a few. I didn't realise, again, I didn't realise how many was, um, but yeah, no wonder I was stressed out. I was reading, you know, books, <laughs> obviously. So, um, I these aren't really in, they're in a kind of chronological order for when I read them, um, but I read um, Feminism is for Everybody by Bell Hooks, which is a kind of short um, text on um, intersectional feminism um and it's very much well the aim of it was bell hooks wanted to um write a book that was
was kind of almost like a kind of beginner's guide to feminism um to sort of bring be able to bring people in and it's very much about like obviously feminism being for everybody but also all the ways in which feminism has been kind of um, misunderstood and it's very much like a kind of quick overview so she, she goes through lots of different topics that are important for feminism um, in not very much detail but it's really it's really good like starting off point for thinking about lots of different issues like um, how class and gender and race and all these things like um, coincide but also lots of other things that you wouldn't imagine you wouldn't necessarily think of when you're thinking about feminism like um, uh, like spirituality and um, family but in kind of different senses um, and yeah it's, it's it's really interesting and really good and I think even if you kind of consider yourself to be like quite well read on like feminist stuff it, it is really helpful it's only about 100 pages so it's really I think it's really easy and really worth the read um, so I would recommend then I read um, Memorial by Alice Oswald so this is a kind of retelling um, of the Iliad um, I think she calls it a translation actually um, which it kind of is it's well the subtitle is an excavation of the Iliad so um, I did well it was in the first term so in kind of the autumn I was doing a module about retellings and reimaginings of um, Greek epics um, and yeah so this was kind of this was one of the readings but I didn't get around to it until like the beginning of the year um, of this year so yeah I actually found this really moving because basically it's it's a kind of like a list of all the people who died but not just that it describes all of the men who died and how they died um but in a very kind of obviously poetic but like it's just kind of relentless like ongoing discussion of all these deaths um there's more to it than that i don't know how else to describe it but yeah it's it's really moving and i think if you're interested in greek myth retellings then this is a really Good one. Then I read um, The Black Jacobins by C.L.R. James um, which is well it was written in the 1930s um, and it's about the Haitian Revolution and Toussaint Louverture um, who kind of led the um, uh, like slave rebellions in the um, in Haiti that led to the Haitian Revolution um, and it's really interesting because it's kind of it's like a history told from a very specific point in time um, where he was tr kind of trying to harness the idea that, um, you know, the, the, the French Revolution and the Haitian Revolution were really, like, fundamentally linked um, to kind of prove that, you know, black people were um, very much like drivers of history and could take their own, like, revolutions, um, kind of looking, like, looking at Africa um, and the Caribbean and hoping for kind of more um revolutions this light is just getting more and more stupid but um yeah it's it's very I don't know I didn't enjoy it particularly I was reading it to review it so I was like as an academic book review so I was you know not particularly like enjoying the reading experience um and also it's a lot it's very detailed it's very like in-depth um and quite yeah quite dense um but if you're interested in the Haitian Revolution it's good what if I what if I do this no that doesn't work does it <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing um okay so I read Sister Outsider by Audrey Lord um which is so good so this is a kind of collection of essays and speeches um and I read this for um the same module that I read um feminism is for everybody for which was about um well it was called inter intersectional feminist writing so you know um but yeah this is really really good um and honestly like Audrey Lord's way of writing is just so beautiful the way she expresses ideas is just it's so cool and I love I love I love this it's so good um obviously it's like a classic of inter intersectional feminist literature um 
but yeah if you haven't read this I would really really recommend it um it's got loads of really cool stuff in it I'm so bad at describing things <laughs> even though she talks about feminism in every like essay or speech or whatever is in here um it's also got it's very varied in its subject matter so there's essays in here about poetry about kind of um eroticism and sexuality and um about her kind of her travels to different places um so it opens with um kind of notes on visiting russia um and yeah it's it's super interesting and i would very highly recommend again it's not very long it's like about 200 pages i think so yeah if you want yeah under 200 pages so if you want again short really good intersectional feminism this one then i read assembly by natasha brown again this is for the same module um and i love this so much i mean everyone was like talking about it when it came out like last year or the year before i can't remember um but yeah it's incredible if you haven't read this yet please do um this is about what is it about the problem with this is because it's so short and it's so complex it's really hard to describe it but it's about essentially you're put into like the head of um a woman who is um well oh i don't want to say anything oh my god okay she is preparing for a weekend away at her like boyfriend's parents um for a kind of celebration of their like anniversary or something um and yeah it's kind of her like going to this event but she also has a very difficult decision that she's making um and yeah she's kind of it's all about oh my god it's about so many things it's about capitalism it's about race it's about um like the history of imperialism it's about it's about everything it's about loneliness it's about like what it means to be alive it's it's so good and it's also just an amazing like example of like how writing can take you into a character's head oh, it's it's exquisite um yeah i wrote an entire essay on this and i love it and i also just dropped it and lastly we have the two books that i wrote my dissertation on so i wrote my dissertation on <laughs> can you remember what they were called um my country africa by um andre Blois and abo une femme de congo um by well technically by ludo martins with leone abo so essentially these are two memoirs um about slash by it's complicated um two congolese women who were involved in um the like um independence movements and um kind of revolution in um the congo the democratic republic of the congo as it is now um and yeah basically i wrote about how because they are both written kind of in collaboration with um western writers like translated by um kind of mediated in some way by western writers um this kind of complicates them but they are also because of that very useful for um examining like the historical context of when they were written and the time that they were written like about um because they were both kind of written about the sort of 50s and 60s um but written in the kind of 80s and early 90s um and it kind of yeah the, the the time that they were written in and the way that they were written with western writers very much informs how the stories that they're telling were told <laughs> i wrote my dissertation on them it was ten thousand words but i can't sum it up here um yeah they're both very interesting um i mean they're available online um but i don't know if they're in print still um but if you want the link <laughs> I can hit you up um but yeah they're very very interesting and um the 
within Andre Bluang and Leonie Abo are like really quite amazing to be honest um and not very well researched so that was fun okay now we can get on to all the other books so first um this is in chronological order pretty much so i read boy parts by eliza clark way back in january um i listened to it on audio i thought it was really fun um in a kind of terrifying dark way <laughs> so it's about a young woman who's kind of really struggling with life um but she is a photographer and she kind of t takes kind of um like erotic photos of men um and as a kind of art thing um and yeah so but but she kind of as the book goes on she caught, kind of becomes more unhinged and starts like putting them in more kind of it gets dark basically i think i enjoyed it a lot because i read it i listened to the audiobook it's read by the author um and it was just really well done um and i thought i found it very like quite funny in a dark way um the main character is horrible <laughs> she's so like yeah she's so such a terrible person but she's also really like it's kind of, it's the kind of thing where it was like you can't look away she's also really funny um, and yeah it's i think it kind of didn't really go anywhere um but i still i still liked it um and i can't really remember much about it to be honest but it was good i liked it then i finished this bad boy bodgy bodgy bodge um so this feels really weird to talk about this now because I, I started reading this like way back in December. Um, I only finished it at the beginning of like end of January, beginning of February, something like that. Um, and yeah, this, this bad boy is huge. He's so big. Um, so this is The Books of Jacob by Olga, Olga, <laughs> by Olga Tukarchuk, um, translated by Jennifer Croft. Um, so in um Kieran's Discord um the Book Boy Book Club we were reading this as a kind of like group read um and it was really it was such a fun time honestly had the best time reading um along with everybody because everyone would like everyone's just like making memes and like posting actual important information for the book and just helping because this is obviously this is really dense it's like historical fiction about a kind of religion cult thing i can't even really remember but i spent fucking two months reading this um yeah i this book is a lot again it's very dense i don't i i know that if i had not had all the people surrounding me reading this i would not have finished this i would not have even picked this up the only reason i picked this up is because kieran sent me a copy and everyone else was reading it as a kind of group and it was really fun so i really enjoyed that um the book itself i parts of it amazing olga tukarczyk is an incredible writer i can tell that however this is just very long very dense and a lot i didn't know what was going on quite a lot of the time there are some moments that are beautifully written stunning and i'm very glad i read it but i didn't really enjoy it <laughs> it happened i don't know then i read um an arc of um out of the sun by ezzy aduggan which was an essay collection all of the essays in it are about race but in kind of unexpected ways so there's one about um ghosts and ghost stories and how that intersects with race which was super interesting um one about kind of paintings the first one's about paintings um and history and how we remember history um there are some that are more kind of like um memoir kind of like personal experience based basically all of the topics discussed it's like it's so good at like holding two truths at once 
two truths that's what those are um and acknowledging that like two contradictory things can exist and be true at the same time and that things are complicated and it's just really really interesting um and yeah i would really highly recommend it i haven't heard many people talk about it um but yeah it came out in like february um and it's really good then i read this gorgeous thing which is what this one's good day by leonie ross like look at this look at this <laughs> i love this um it's, this is great okay so i listened to this on audio um i would really highly recommend the audio actually it kind of it's a really like it, it really immerses you into the world um so this is a kind of like fantastical type book um about um a land called poppy show where basically everyone ha has a kind of a, some sort of like magic or something sort of otherworldly about them it takes place over one day um and you follow various different characters kind of doing different things and kind of going about their lives um except this day is like it's very important and different to other days um yeah i don't know what more to say about it really without spoiling it but this is so gorgeous i don't know i i love this some people say it's too weird and they can't get into it i mean that's fine but i think for me because i listen to it on audio and again the re the author reads it which is amazing because you get kind of like I don't know it just everything felt like so real and so you just kind of have to go with it some parts i sort of and also because of just like my the state of my brain um i kind of lost it at certain parts so i wasn't entirely sure where i was or what was going on but i kind of just really enjoyed the ride um and i think it's beautiful and i don't know i, I would really recommend it i loved it then i listened to um heaven by miko kawakami um which was long listed for the international booker um and as was books of jacob that i think they were the only two i've read from the long list um i really wanted to read more and i have more i have lots more on my tbr um but yeah i didn't get to read any more before the winner was announced but i will from now on um but yeah heaven is about well it's about two kids who are being bullied at school um that's kind of yeah that's basically it without spoilers but um it's it's very odd because it's kind of like you have these very like philosophical conversations um between the children and then also between like them and their bullies about like kind of the nature of evil and like people and i didn't really buy into all of that i don't know i didn't i thought this was fine um it didn't really like grab me i think the only reason i listened to all of it um was because i listened to it at work um well hoovering um and yeah it was i just basically listened to it like over the course of one day um and yeah it's fine i don't know i don't remember it very well it didn't really leave much of an impression on me um sorry then i went into full comfort reading mode um so <laughs> i read the alloy of law by brandon sanderson which is the first in the second Mistborn trilogy it gets confusing with old brando um yeah with where his books come um but it's yeah it's the start of a new um series but set in a world that is the same as a trilogy that i have I have previously read which is the first Mistborn trilogy essentially the alloy of law is like um a kind of it's almost like a detective story but like set in this kind of i don't know kind of steampunk like fantasy world it's so good um yeah this i just kind of i love brandon sanderson i love like the world and his characters and his world building and this just made me very happy um i do have the next two now to um carry on um, but yeah, the only reason I didn't carry on with the series at the time, like immediately after reading the first one was because I didn't have the books and I couldn't get them. Um, so it's great. I love it. Then I listened to Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan, which I read when I was a lot younger and 
I loved I loved the Percy Jackson series. Um, I haven't reread them in a long time. Um, I didn't actually end up reading any of the rest of them. Um, I just listened to the first one and yeah it just kept me company while I was feeling very sad. <laughs> um, and I love it so that was that. And now we're getting into the books that kind of kept me company while I was moving out of the intense essay writing period and into freedom. Um, so firstly um, we have Detransition Baby by Tori Peters which I have had for a year. I've wanted to read it since it came out last year and I just hadn't got around to it until now. Um, and yeah I really love this. Basically you follow Reese, um, who is a trans woman and she... <laughs> her ex who um, was a trans woman but has now detransitioned into um, to being a man um, called Ames, her ex Ames gets in touch with Reese and says by the way I've made I've got my boss who I'm having an affair with pregnant um, I know you want a kid I'm not sure how I feel about being a father because I'm like confused and a, like a gender is weird and I don't like the idea of being a father do you want to be a kind of three-way parent situation with this child um, and it kind of follows on from there. I really love this. I think it's an excellent, like, just the way you get to know all three of these characters um, is really beautiful. And the way that it talks about, like, gender and motherhood um, is so complicated and so, like, I don't know, it's so heartfelt and, and like, genuine. I don't know how else to describe it. And this was this is very like it's really sad at some points um it's also there's also a lot of sex in it which I wasn't expecting um but but it's also quite like I don't know it's comforting in a way um and yeah I really I really enjoyed this then I read Great Circle by Maggie Shipshead finally um the lovely Charlotte from Low Shelf Esteem sent this to me for my birthday because she's an angel um yeah because I mean partly because it was it was shortlisted, shortlisted I think, yeah, I should say, yes, shortlisted for the Booker Prize last year, um, I didn't read it then, but it was then longlisted and then shortlisted as well um, for the Women's Prize this year, and I was like, okay, I guess I'll read it. Um, so I read it, and I loved it, unsurprisingly, it's really good, loads of people love it, it's been nominated for prizes, Who, who's surprised that it's good? Um, yeah, this is basically about um, a pilot called Marion who, well, it kind of follows her life from beginning to end, essentially. Um, she, and she, I think it's pretty clear from the beginning, but yeah, the, the kind of, she's known for like trying to circumnavigate the, the world, but over the poles um, and then disappearing. Um, so you follow her life, um, but then also the life of a um actress who is playing her in a film adaptation in the kind of like modern day um so it's mostly set over the kind of like 20s to 40s um in the US following Marion and yeah I I don't know I I love this so it's very like detailed um and I love the kind of historical fiction where you get like the detail about like everyone so like most of the people you meet even if they're not that important or they don't become that important until later on um you get their kind of like backstory a bit and then you kind of follow them a bit and then so I really love that I don't know it's just enjoyable it's just good like it's just a good book it's just a good book <laughs> this is my book reviewing skills now I'm sorry it's just good it's just good so yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I love this quite as much as um, a lot of people I know, um, because I know people who love this. Um, yeah, I, I, I read it over a quite long time while I was writing a lot of essays, um, and it did really, like, it was lovely to read because it's very escapist, it's very, like, um, it's very readable, like I said, um, and every time I would, like, I really want to pick it up um, because it's quite like propulsive as well um so you really want to know like what's happening um 
and yeah it's just gorgeous it's really really beautiful um so i would really hi hi highly recommend this if you haven't read it yet somehow like me um i mean i have read it now but you know i haven't read it for a long time despite lots of people recommending it to me so read it it's really good then i read another um women's prize shortlisted book um sorry and bless by meg mason so this i kept seeing kind of divided reviews of um and like some people say it's really funny some people were saying it was like just really sad um some people think that it's a really good representation of like what being mentally ill is like some people think it's like kind of insensitive and not very good and i yeah i was kind of like intrigued by the discourse um and because of that i allowed myself to buy this as one of my kind of like finishing uni presents um and i have read it since then um and i'm not sure how i feel about it i kind of i feel like i kind of fall in the middle of everybody's like opposing opinions um because there are some points in this where it was scary to me how accurate the like representation of mental illness feels i should say what this is about basically this follows a woman in i think she's 40 um and she has had um you kind of pick up i pick her up at the point where she is just like i think her second marriage is just failing um and then you kind of go back um to sort of her all the way through her childhood her first marriage all the way up to like the point where um she's divorcing her second husband for like most of the book i was just kind of reading it like this is fine like it's not really anything particularly special i wanted to keep reading it but it wasn't like really you know there are some moments that are really really funny and there are some moments that like i mean basically the main character has a mental illness that is never well interestingly it's kind of it's named but the name is like blanked out so it's it's a, it's a it says at the end of the book that it's a made up mental illness essentially that doesn't exist the treatments for it don't exist and instead it's kind of none of it is real however i would say that the illness that she is experiencing as far as i can tell is like a very is an extreme acute depression um that kind of comes and goes and because i personally saw a lot of myself in this um especially having just come out of a very intense depressive episode um it was there were some moments where i was like did you just take that directly from my brain um and i think because of that it is a really good book to read if you do not experience mental illness um to kind of explain how it feels some of how it feels um and how it can impact your relationships like <sighs> this book is really heartbreaking and it, it kind of it shows you how mental illness can kind of like rob you of a life and opportunities that you you could have had and also also the importance of diagnosis and how like that was something i really related to was how like freeing and like um life-changing diagnosis can be and having recognition i don't know i i didn't really feel very much while i was reading it i was kind of just like yeah this is fine and i'm not sure how i feel about the fact that she kind of uses experiences of mental illness but then says that it's not real and i don't know i'm, I'm kind of confused about all of that 
I'm sort of conflicted. Um, but yeah, I I think it's it's good. I did kind of find going through her entire life a bit boring at times because it was basically just like she makes bad decisions. But oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm very conflicted. It's interesting though, and I'm really glad I've read it. Then, lastly, the book I finished yesterday is The Vanishing Act of Esme Lennox by Maggie O'Farrell. This, weirdly enough, shares a lot of themes um, with both Sorrow and Bliss and Great Circle. I feel like those three, and actually the Transition Baby, they're all about motherhood and they're all about, like, they all have elements of like trauma and um, mental illness and the treatment of mental illness in them. Um, and and how those two are kind of linked up. So this is basically, well, you follow um, mostly Iris, um, who is kind of woman, probably in her, I don't know, 30s-ish, um, and she one day finds out that, well, she gets told that she has a long lost great aunt who she didn't know about, um, who has been in a psychiatric hospital, but she needs to be kind of taken away from it because the psychiatric hospital is closing down um and from there you kind of follow her perspective as she's sort of like finding Esme who is her great aunt um and kind of deciding what to do with her you follow Esme's per perspective as she kind of goes back like across her life um and um all of her life like from childhood but kind of it's sort of dotted around she goes like through her memories um and then also um Esme's sister so Iris's grandmother um who is at that point um at the point in the kind of modern day um setting she has Alzheimer's um so you kind of follow her like fragmented like thoughts and memories um that you can't always quite place and again it's like it's sort of like a kind of mystery where you're trying to figure out what's going on and how Esme ended up in this psychiatric hospital for 60 years um and how she kind of disappeared and this is heartbreaking it's so sad the end is oh my god it's so sad but like yeah i again i really i really related to esme in this and um it's kind of i don't know i think again this is just kind of a good book like it's just really well written, really easy to read, very accessible. I read this in like two days. It's so sad, but it's so good. So yeah, I would, again, I'd really recommend this. I really love this. That's that. That's all the books um, that I've read over the last almost six months. Um, and well, kind of five-ish. Um, and yeah, I, I'm sorry I've been away for so long, um, but I kind of didn't really have a choice. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be back and I'm looking forward to chatting to all in the comments. Please let me know if you've read any of these books because I would really love to know your opinions on them and if you, or if you want to read any of them. Well, my phone died and the lighting is making me look like I've just been punched in this eye for some reason. Um, but yeah, I was saying, um, hopefully I'll be back soon, um, but who knows <laughs> no i should be um and i'm also having more time to read now um so i will have more to talk about um yeah i guess just you know thank you for watching and being around i appreciate it um yeah thank you i will see you soon